there is much to be grateful for today. All you have to do is play the five gate, the five love language game throughout the day. Right now, I will say words of affirmation to me. I will do an act of service for my ignorance. I will sit in the dark and hold space for my part of myself that feels sad, you see, because you're not going to be able to celebrate your prosperity mindset because it believes that it's ignorant. But if you can love ignorance, it will change back into prosperity. You are an alchemist. Turn the lead into gold. From that being said, we are going to bring in Lady Nada and she's going to give you a little demonstration that you can use to reclaim your self-love of your little masculine and your little feminine. <clears throat> oh, dears, it's so good to be here. That was a lot of energy for St. Germain to bring through, but we feel that you have peaked and become aware of certain things. And now I want to take you into a nurturing, um, a, a nurturing, uh, uh, one moment, we're looking for the correct term here. Example, a nurturing example. And again, when we offer you these uh, opportunities to practice embodiment, we are not asking you to follow this precisely. We are just inspiring one idea that you may utilize and change at any time to make it your own. This is just about reminding you of how powerful you are when you work with your body. When you work with your body. Now, this part of you that you have lost behind, that St. Germain has uh, reminded you all about, you have not been unaware of it. You've probably been very aware of these parts. But did you know that your ignorance was actually your prosperity? Did you know that your people-pleasing was actually something else, you see? So the distortion you use to survive is time to be basically reorganized. This is why you're in the retrograde. So you can go back and turn it back into what it originally was. So we love to use the two-point operational system of the quantum neutrality system by using the example that your left hand and your right hand are simulations or, or the interactions between your masculine and feminine brain, your hemisphere. And so your right hand is the positive energy of the masculine, which is the provider, protector, the fixer, the builder, you see. And the feminine energy is the nurturing, the grower, the multiplier, the atmosphere, the energy, the mood. And together, that is a negative and a positive charge that basically create movement, motivation, it creates the idea of something that can be new, but it will not make anything together unless the observer is neutral. So let us now all work together. And if you are not in a safe place, then you can do this at another time. This will be at the end of this video transmission. In your right hand, I want you to think about who you were as a child with your masculine energy. Now, what your masculine energy represents for you as a child is your action, your behavior, what you did, the doingness of you, how you showed up physically, the way the world saw your body. This is the realness of your essence. Your masculine energy is your action, your behavior. And in your left hand is your thoughts and your feelings, your ideas, your visions, your imaginations, your moods. And together, this is the inner child. There is a small masculine and a small feminine within you. And you were so full of life. You were moving your body everywhere. You were curious, you were adventurous. You were determined, you were vocal, you were communicative, you were emotional, you were like weather. And you did not suffer, but you did possibly have pain. Pain was just a messenger. Suffering means there's no solution. 
And what happens is when these two aspects of you are ripped apart and your action world is told to stop, stop dancing, stop singing, stop speaking, stop crying. Though then later it became stop cheating, stop lying, stop manipulating, you see. So it was always you're in trouble for being yourself somehow. And then over here, stop crying. Get your head out of the clouds. Stop imagining. All of this is who you were. And see, you can see how you were one, you were split into two, and then two became four, became six, and how many ever personality dysfunctions you have. Well, here we are. And so what do we do? What do we do with this to bring this back together? In your last analogy, you put the potential in one hand and you put the problem in the other hand. You said, this is who I am and this is where I am. And then you collapse the wave, you see. But in this scenario, what I would really prefer for you to do is to take your little masculine and your little feminine and look at them through neutrality or unconditional love. What did I have to stop doing? Who did I have to stop being? Take a moment. Well, I stopped doing this. I stopped asking for what I wanted. And I stopped being so shiny. This is just an example. Now look, this is the conflict you have in your marriage, in your family. This is it. And what I want you to do is I want you to look as the observer, a loving parent, unconditional to this little masculine energy within you, whether you're a girl or a boy, it doesn't matter. You all have both. I had to stop doing this. I had to stop being this. Just to have a roof over my head. Just to be included. Just to be further shamed and guilted because even though you are told to stop being yourself, it takes seven years for you finally to get that message before you stop being you. So as you take a moment, and we hope that you do take a moment, time is your true currency. This is where all of your money is sitting, my dears. All of your health is in this time that you spend with yourself here. I put my little masculine here and I say, I love you. That wasn't fair to you. I'm going to let you do whatever you want. And you, your state of being that rattled the cages of the demons within my parents, the natural intuition you had, the awareness of the empathy and compassion you had at an early age, psychic abilities that you don't even remember are sitting right here. And all I want you to do is experience the emotion of compassion. And if you can, in the moment, radiate from two points out, imagine giving love to these two places within you that have been at war with each other. Because you see the being says, I must be, and the do says, but I cannot do. You're letting me down. Well, you're letting me down because you keep asking me to be something I cannot be. And I keep wanting you to do something that you will not do. This is why marriage doesn't work, you see. And so, what we want to do is not look at who is right and who is wrong, but we want to look as the nurturing observer here at the two points of ourself, the duality, the greatness, the potential. What was I not allowed to do? This isn't about these two getting along here. These are perfect in nature. Let them be. The observer here sends love to both. I love you both. I now send you. I send you permission to do. I send you permission to be. I allow and accept all that we are. Our potential, our confidence is in the potential, not in our past. 
Our worth is in the potential, not in our current circumstance. And when you have felt love for both of these, I want you to imagine with your eyes closed, creating a figure eight between the two of them, linking them back together at the center point. Do this now nine times, nine times. You do not need to move your hands. You're moving your eyes from the inside through imagination. Nine times, I now link my potential and my power together in the name of love. And when you have done this nine times, you are going to bring your hands together into prayer, prayer mudra. You're going to soften your shoulders. You're going to collapse your hands over your heart, and you're going to imagine feeling your own heart beat. You are resurrecting the life of the dead within you. Now breathe deeply nine times into this little masculine, into this feminine, as if you were pumping a heart back into the beat. You are acting as the medic. You are putting yourself back online. We will hold space for you every time you do this. How many times do you need to do this? As many times as it takes. You practiced many years to become this separated from yourself. So give yourself a bit of your own time. Whether you do this in the morning with your birthday or you do this at night before you go to bed, it doesn't matter as long as you do it. Remember, the way that you're going to demonstrate love is not just by your words. It is by your actions and consistency and loyalty to this union is the only thing that you will ever need to create a 5D reality. 80% of the work that you will be working on is all just through imagination of recalibration. You're just reconciling. You're rehabilitating. You're on a reconnaissance mission. That is it. And once you are together and begin to practice this, then you will start to see that everyone around you begins more loving opportunities. And all of a sudden, genius insights. I know, I know what prosperity is. How do I know what stocks are? How do I know that I'm supposed to go to Georgia? How am I supposed to know I'm supposed to meet you? Well, guess what? The part of you that was dead that's going to come back to life knows where all of your treasure is. So you owe this to yourself to allow yourself your inheritance and your birthright of all of you to come through. You didn't want to enjoy this with only half of yourself. You would have devoured and consumed it. But when you have all of yourself and you're fulfilled, well, then you can enjoy it and share it. And this is what you came for. We hope this helps you. We hope that in your nighttime routine, that you take stock of all the things you celebrated, that you rate your day out of, a, out of one to 10. How well did I perform my five love languages to myself? Was I able to love my shame today? Was I able to affirm for my guilt? Was I able to be of service for my fear? This is all that you have left to do. And with that being said, we are complete.